Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Silverfield. All right, yes, look at you. You look so beautiful. <laughs> yes, oh man, I'm so excited. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yes, Hello. awesome. Hi. Well, it's great to be here. I'm excited to be doing this show. I've had a lot of questions about the show. What am I going to be doing? And uh, one of my friends came up to me. They're like, this is a family friendly show, right? I'm like, yeah. I failed to mention which family, though. It's the Osbournes. <laughs> Those of you thinking about leaving, that was the first joke, okay? <laughs> I drove here today. I didn't walk here. It'd be ridiculous. I'm from Hoffman Estates. <laughs> I'm sure, some of you drove here today. And uh, for some reason, we're so angry in the cars nowadays, right? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I mean, we just get in the car. And just... I'm angry. I'm ticked off. And, and, and for some reason, we think that when we're in the car, it's appropriate to be mean to old people. Anybody? Right? Is this, you guys understand what I'm saying here? Like, let me give you an example. Okay. You'll be at Jewel Asco. You'll be getting your groceries. You'll be walking out to your car. Some nice old lady is struggling to get her groceries in her trunk. What do you do? Oh, how you doing there, man? Yes. Uh, I'm a good Samaritan. Let me help you put these in your trunk for you. And you just go sit in their front seat there. You just be careful. Now, I'm going to get the... Okay, that's good. Now, go in the, and then drive safe because there's a lot of wackos on the road out there. You just be careful. <laughs> Five minutes later, the same lady's in the car in front of you. You're heading down the road. You're like, come on, lady, it's not Sunday. What are you doing? Why are you ruining this day for me? It's ridiculous. And don't let them fool you. You know they're in the front seat of their car. You know they know they're going five miles into the speed limit. They're just sitting there. <laughs> Sucker. Ridiculous. Yeah. Now, I've been on the other end of this situation, so I understand a little bit. I have a English grandmother, who is hilarious, by the way. And she's always trying to be proper. And she talks like this, yes, you see, because she's from England, Stratford on Avon, Shakespeare Town. And uh, she's always trying to be proper. Now, we were driving down the road, and some jerk just goes, <laughs> you know, and gone. And, uh, yeah, and my grandmother was like, and she, you know, trying to be as proper as possible, just simply rolls down the window and goes, yes, well, F to you, sir. <laughs> Yes, honking at me like some sort of maniac. <laughs> Matthew, can you believe what he did? Grandma, I don't know why you said that. <laughs> well, F to you too, Matthew. <laughs> okay, just keep your eyes on the road. All right. She's a little crazy, but I love her. So there's a lot of things in cars nowadays. Everybody's got a GPS in here, I'm assuming. Yeah. That one guy over there has a GPS, nobody else does. Okay. So I have a GPS, and I always have it on the British English voice, because I think it's hilarious. And uh, having a GPS, she's, she's always so demanding. She's always like, turn left, turn right. Why did you buy me if you didn't want me to tell you what to do? <laughs> it's fun driving with my wife in the car and the GPS, because now it's like I have two wives. <laughs> now I have two women telling me what to do. Love it! <laughs> what the heck is that? I didn't rehearse that. Uh, so I like to mess with my wife when she's not in the car and I'm driving with the GPS on. I'll be driving down the road and she'll be talking to me on the phone. Hey, how's your day going? Okay. And then uh, all of a sudden the background she'll hear, in, in two miles, turn right. And it was a little mumble. She didn't hear it. She's like, um, <laughs> Matt, I heard a, a voice in the background. Is there somebody with you in the car? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I heard something and <laughs> sounded like a woman. So, I'm just saying, I don't know what you're talking about, honey. In one mile, turn right. Matthew, I heard it again. There it is. There it is. It's the same voice. Is there a British lady in the car with you? Matthew, is there a British lady in the car with you? And then, like, I'll switch it to the Spanish language and be like, a la derecha. She's like, Matt, is there a Spanish lady in the car with you, too? Is there a British lady and a Spanish lady in the car with you? Why are you driving around foreign women? Am I not good enough for you? Ridiculous. <laughs> GPS lady, I wonder if she's single. I'm married, I'm taken, I don't really care. But I always thought, who would she marry? Who would she be with? 
And then I thought, I got it. The cha-cha guy. You guys know what I'm talking about when you go to a wedding? To the left, to the left, to the right, to the right, to the front, to the back. Cha-cha guy. Can you imagine if they tried to drive somewhere? <laughs> or got an argument, how that situation would go. So much technology nowadays, too. You got the GPS, you got everything. And, and, and the younger generations nowadays, there's, there's so much technology that we have no idea what to do with it, right? So we try to cope by using too much of it at the same time. This will be an example of what I'm talking about. Have you, ever, have you ever had somebody call you to see if you got their email? <laughs> I to myself, why didn't you just call me in the first place? We could have saved this little thing that we do here every now and then. You know? Or you reply, thank you, in an email. Somebody sends you a nice email. Thank you. Send it on. They reply back, you're welcome. <laughs> Was there really a point to that? I mean, I was under the impression thank you just kind of ended the email session that we were having. You expect me, I don't, you know, call you being like, uh, did you get my thank you still that I replied to your, you're welcome? <laughs> They're mad at you about it. So yes, lots of things going on. I, uh, I'm not a fan of hospitals. I don't like hospitals. What I don't understand is the hospital clothes. Cause uh, I mean, what's the deal with the butts missing there? You know what I mean? We for just forget to add them. And, and the people who buy these items, you know, it's like, did they just go in and be like, yes, I would like the ones with the butts missing, please. Do you have anything with a draft? And don't forget, we want them to look as humiliated as possible. Thank you. And uh, so, you know, I don't like, uh, don't like the hospitals. And I always, it's, for some reason, I, 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 I feel bored when I go to the hospitals and I start getting weird thoughts in my head. You guys know what I'm talking, you're sitting in the waiting room or whatever and you see some guy in a wheelchair go by and for some reason, you just start thinking, I could grease up that guy's wheelchair right now and throw him right down the hall and no one would even see him. <laughs> see that guy right there with the IV bag? I could just rip that thing right off of there. What is that? Why am I thinking this? I wonder if I could steal that catheter. Why would you ever steal a catheter? Terrible. This is family friendly, you guys. You need to be quiet. You need to calm down. <laughs> so, uh, I like going to the doctor's office, though. That's fun. And the funny thing about that is you always have the same three receptionist women in the doctor's office. You got the one young, blonde college chick who's like way too excited about her job. You come in, she's like, Hi! My name's Kimmy, and here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna need your insurance card, and your license, and then I'm just gonna do in the computer, and next time you won't have to do that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go to the next lady. Thank you. I'm gonna go to the next lady here. And then there's the other lady, the really crabby lady that hates everybody. The second you walk in, oh, I see the doctor. She's like, oh, She closes the window. <laughs> You come up, she's like, okay, I'm typing. She gets on the phone, not even talking to me. Like, oh, ma'am, I know the computer's not on and you didn't even dial any numbers. Like, Shut up. I'm doing an anaerobic workout. Just quiet. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go to the next lady. And then the next lady just completely forgets to open the glass door and she's like, <laughs> can't hear anything. You're Sign the paper! I'm just gonna go back to the blonde chick. At least you know what she was doing. <laughs> good times, good times. So, I just got a new job recently, so that's why I had to go to the doctor. I had to get a drug test. Glad they're very confident in my work. <laughs> Can you imagine if a college ap application was the same way? Son, we like your grades. You were top in your class. We think you're gonna be a great student. But pee in this cup and we'll really find out the truth. <laughs> That's what you need to do there, buddy. So I had a weird experience. I went in there and, uh, so weird. Went into the doctor's office trying to make myself feel comfortable. I gotta pee in a cup today. 
And so I was like, joking with the doctor, and he's like, well, son, we're gonna have to take a urine sample. Joking around, I was like, that's great, because I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, it gets better. <laughs> then he goes, well, let's put that pee to good use. <laughs> put that pee to good use? What? What, it, what, what are the good uses of pee? <laughs> Is, is, do I need to sign a waiver or something? Is this like this secret potion, the missing ingredient in this secret potion or something? <laughs> weird, it's a weird experience overall. So I'm recently married to my wonderful wife. She's your <laughs> yes, you should clap for her having to deal with me for one and a half years. So. One and a half. <laughs> married a long time. One and a half years. Well, well experienced. <laughs> no. What's so funny? <laughs> so yeah, so we've been married one and a half years, and uh, yeah, so we, uh, you know, I was helping her move in, helping her pack women and packing things. And there was this box on the floor, and I was helping her, you know, whatever. So I just was like going up to this box. Like, okay. oh, my goodness, what is in this? Opened it up, shoes, just shoes everywhere, shoes all over the place, boots, high heels, sandals, little flip-flop things, going for the beach, everything like every, everywhere. Me, I have these, just stolen from an old man, just went, poof, took the shoes, walked away. That's what you gotta do, take the shoes, walk away. So we went shopping for shoes the other day. Needless to say, I needed some, I only have one pair. And guys, what do you do? You grab the shoe off the thing, you find one that like, takes two seconds, you put one on, and you do the walk, right? Okay. This feels right. All right, let me get the box. Let's go. She's like, Matt. Mirror. <laughs> Amateur. <laughs> put the other shoe on. Honey, I don't need to put the other shoe on. I can see it fits, and I'm good to go. Matt, put the other shoe on. How do you know if it's truly going to fit? The other one's like, it's not like I have a 12 and a 3 here. <laughs> I mean, I think they're both going to fit. People started looking at this point. I was like, okay, whatever. Just that guy. The other shoe put it on. Didn't even tie him. Just... Okay, see, I told you. Can we just go? And she's like, uh, no. Matt, here. <laughs> what? Tie your shoes. <laughs> tie my shoes. Tie your shoes. Why do I need to tie my shoes? I clearly fit. Tie your shoes now. Whoa. We haven't been married that long for you to be saying now, okay? <laughs> she gets down, starts tying my shoes. She's like, bunny hoop, bunny hoop over the rainbow. And tied. Boom. Like a little genie. Boom. Didn't even buy them. Didn't even buy them. <laughs> it's like, guys, we don't, we don't tell you girls. We don't give you advice about your shoes. We don't care. You're not, we're not, you know, what do you think of these boots? Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't wear them. <laughs> I know I don't want to be kicked by them. <laughs> to be honest, I like the ones we got on now. I don't know why you gotta buy more. <laughs> so many different shoe designers out there nowadays. Jessica Simpson. Jessica Simpson has a shoe. Are you kidding me? I don't think so. I don't even think she knows what day it is, let alone being able to design a shoe. <laughs> That's right. Any Jessica Simpson fans in here? <laughs> Seriously, they'll stay. It's a good show. <laughs> And it's always crazy when a guy is in the mall and he gets lost, like in a big store like Macy's. Oh, bad day for everyone. You gotta send out a search team. I'm like, oh, I don't know where I am. Okay, walk past purses already. That's good, okay. It's my third time walking past lingerie. <laughs> Guys always find a reason to go past the lingerie section in stores, am I right? For some reason, the item you're shopping for could be in an end cap by the front door, but no, you make your way all the way around the store just so you can pass through the laundry section, because there might be something in the back. <laughs> it's always an accident, too, when they get there, oh, I don't know how I got here. <laughs> Since I'm here, I might as well look around. <laughs> like they think you don't see them walking by looking at it. <laughs> The older you get, the more you think you can fool people with that trick, too. See some guy walking with the cane. 
He doesn't even care. He just looks at it. That's not the way they used to make them, but I like it. Then he gets past the lingerie section and he's all, hey, under the arm, walking away. I don't think you're fooling anybody, buddy. <laughs> Good times. There's always like 10 other guys behind that one guy too. They're all walking around, I'm lost. All doing the same thing. Mannequins too, those, those, those seen the way those things have developed nowadays? Yeah, you know men have taken over the design on those things. You know what I'm talking about? The ones with the voluptuous curves and no heads. Yeah. If a woman designed it, it'd have her husband's wallet in one hand, her purse in the other. And she would have a head. Probably have makeup if you wear head. My wife is always making excuses to go shopping. I don't like it. But I do feel the obligation to go with. She always has an excuse like, oh, Kohl's is having a sale. Doesn't Kohl's have a sale every day? I mean, to be honest, I don't even think it's considered a sale anymore. I think it's just the regular prices. Choice. The main reason for going shopping is you have to return something. We spend all this time shopping just to take it back. Maybe we could save a little on gas money if we just stayed at home and shopped online. You know, you, you always think you can just fool the, the cashier lady at uh, customer service and you're bringing back your used plunger. Yeah, I got this, it was used. I don't know what happened. I thought it was a hammer, but apparently it's a used plunger uh, from 1987, so I don't know why you have that stocked on your shelf. Weird. Speaking of food, my wife and I don't eat lunch on Saturdays because we go to the Taste of Sam's Club. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. We're just there today. It wasn't even the taste when they had food. Going to Sam's Club is always an occasion too because it's always an adventure. You go there, the parking lot is 40 miles long. It's always packed, so you gotta park way in the back. You can't even see the place. You're pulling out a map, a GPS locator thing. You're like, honey, I don't even see it. Get out of the binoculars and the telescope. It's gotta be back there somewhere. I can see, we just keep walking north. We should hit Sam's Club. It gives you enough time, too, when you get there because you gotta pull out your Sam's Club membership card. There's always that one lady in the front there waiting to stare you down before you pull out that card to prove that you're a legitimate member. I am allowed to be here. <laughs> what would happen if you walked in and didn't have a card? There'd be somebody behind the corner going, Get up! Didn't have a card! Taking a back ride. Sit down! All right, tell us what you know. We know you're not a legitimate member. Are you from Costco? Mm -hmm. What's going on there, buddy? Taste of Sam's Club. They always have the little trays out, the little food, little, little, little meats, and little things, little items. Always have people working the counters. They have the little thing with the mandarin oranges in a cup, little slices. <laughs> Why are we putting three slices of mandarin oranges in a little dipsy cup? Is it too much to ask to just put the whole darn mandarin orange on the table? <laughs> you have bulk of everything. <laughs> what a treat. Then you got the poor old guy that they got. He must have been bad because they stick him with the little samples of Coca-Cola like no one's ever heard of it before. <laughs> But try this, it's a new product called Coca-Cola. <laughs> Apparently it's made from real Coke. Have a sip. <laughs> Favorite is the cheese one though, I love cheese. And uh, we always think that we can fool the person who's giving out these items. Like, we can go back seven or eight times and they won't notice. <laughs> you walk by, oh, what do we have here? Mm, oh, what is that, cheese? Never heard of it, why don't you tell me about it? <laughs> Sir, you look very familiar to me. I don't know what you're talking about. May I try a piece? You've already had 72. <laughs> no, I don't know. Let me just try it. Sir, there's a pack behind me. A pound of cheese. Just take that, please. <laughs> Bulk of everything. Trying to get out of Sam's Club is ridiculous because you got to go through all the shopping. They don't sell one of anything there. Even if you want to buy a mattress, they're like, you're trying to leave. They're like, sir, I'm sorry. You have 10 more mattresses you got to take with you. We sell bulk here. Then you gotta go to the line, and there's always like 50 cashier registers. The store's packed, there's two people working them. They can you have bulk of everything, why don't you have bulk workers? <laughs> then you gotta pull out your card again when you get through the line. 
to show them that you're still a member and nothing's changed since you've been in here. <laughs> Pay for your items and they don't even give you bags. Take this used cardboard box from the Mandarin Oranges. Don't, have you been to any other store? You own Walmart, don't they give out plastic bags? I don't know what you're talking about. Then you get through the line just to get to another line. Now there's a guy by the door who's got to check your receipt to make sure that you're not trying to steal any items in the store, to make sure that when you got from the cashier register and walked 10 steps, you didn't take 40 other items with you. What is this job interview like? Well, Bob, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm never late, I'm a hard worker, I'm always on time, and I like uh, people. Bob, can you look at a receipt and draw a straight line down it like you looked at it? <laughs> yes, I can there, buddy. Yes, I can. You're pretty perfect for this job. He doesn't even look at it. The whole thing's like a drug exchange anyways. You go up there, and the guy's like, okay, here's how this is gonna go down. You're gonna hand me your receipt. I'm not even really gonna look at the darn thing, I'm just gonna put a mark on it. And you can walk out the door. Okay. The deli there is great. Gotta love the deli. There's one thing I don't get about the deli, the products that they have here. Have you ever really looked at the products in the deli? Yeah, have, you ever, have you ever seen the big rectangular cube squared thing shape of pig? <laughs> is there some sort of freaky breed of square shaped pig out there that I'm not aware of? You know what I'm talking about? It's just this big block. Is that how they're breeding them now? It makes it easier for them to just stack them in the, the pig pens. You don't even have to have them run around and stack them on top of each other. It's just a long log of ham with a snout, ears, and tail. And then, of course, they have the sizes that you can get cut. You know, like the one through 10, and one is like a, you know, a little sliver, and then 10's like an inch thick slice. Who is ordering an inch thick slice of ham? Who just goes up and is like, you know, I don't want to live for much longer. Why don't you give me the inch thick slice of cubed ham and throw a half inch slice of cheese on there? That'd be great. This is why we're overweight in this country. This is why we have shows like Biggest Loser. Anybody a fan of Biggest Loser? Here? Yes. Love that show. Now we have to have television telling us, get off your butt, you're huge. <laughs> Clearly, I need to. But we watch The Biggest Loser, it's our favorite thing. Ironically though, when we watch The Biggest Loser, we're sitting down on the couch, shoving eight ounce cheeseburgers into our mouth. <laughs> with a half, half inch slice of cube ham and cheese. I wonder how all these people got so fat. <laughs> Pass the tater chips. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm not a big fan of working out. I started a new workout recently. I understand why they don't want to do it though. Because it's just a whole other world in there. It's just people walking around. <laughs> I'm huge. Everyone's like pumping iron, like, Bleh. and they always make noises like, Bleh. is it absolutely necessary? I can do it just the same. I'm not making any noise. You're all, always talking about how much it burns. What are you talking about? Burns. People in here are like, he doesn't know about the burning. He doesn't, what an idiot. Or how much it burns. They're like, oh, using their, trying to see what their phrase is. Yeah, this here is the uh, triple bicep toral flex thing. Works out the uh, lower dorsal fin. <laughs> Siri here. See what I'm doing there? It's good. Doing stand-up now, I like this, this is fun. Thought about being a model, though. My wife always tells me, you should be a model. You should be a model. I'm thinking to myself, I should be a model. <laughs> Darn tootin' there, cutes McGee. <laughs> you should be a model. But what kind of model would I be? There's different types of models. You know, there's, in my opinion, there's three different types of models. First of all, you got your magazine models. You know what I'm talking about? These are the people in the, you know, the plastic up against the chair. Yeah. I'm hot. Yes. And you look at the bottom of the page, it says like Cheerios or something. You're like, Lord, my cholesterol, yes. Weirdos. Then you got your TV models, you know. Remember those Herbal Essence commercials? Remember that? Like, who's to them all? You know, I'm like in the shower. Those, those commercials are bad, okay? And they lie, okay? Because I tried that with the shampoo in the shower, nothing happened. All right, I'm like, Nobody came out from the corners. I had hors d'oeuvres out. I had like a party plates, party platters, hats, and everything. 
Nobody there? Ridiculous. Then you have my favorite kind of model. You guys probably are not as aware of these. The textbook model. It's coming along. It's starting to hit you, isn't it? You know what I'm talking about? These are the people with the pastel colored shirts. The hair's like, Poof. they're always like, yeah. They always got the calculator like, yeah. They, go, they got the person next to him who's like way too interested in math. He's like, yeah. <laughs> like the photographer must have like taken the picture just right before they got to the full smile because they're always like, yeah. <laughs> I used to play baseball. Not that much of a, I guess I've been getting into sports lately. I like going to sports games, probably. There's one sport that I don't understand, though, and that's tennis. Because I don't think it's really a sport. Let's be honest. I mean, that and ping pong. Okay? Any sport that you can play with yourself on a wall shouldn't be considered a sport. Okay? <laughs> and, and why is it that we have to be quiet at these tennis games? You know, is it, is it really hard for them to concentrate on hitting that darn thing? You know, I mean, baseball games. You got a guy out there giving a baseball thrown at him 100 miles an hour, and he's got to slap the thing away with a stick. Football games, you got these big rhinos coming at you like, I'm gonna kill you. The crowd's like, ah! and then the guy, I gotta concentrate on this guy. No, oh, tennis, we have to be quiet. They're running out there, there's furry things flying at them, they gotta hit it with a snowshoe. <laughs> the audience is always so surprised when somebody scores too. It seems like there's always one guy that's in control out there, you know? He's just... The other guy's like... The announcers are like, that guy's scoring, now let me tell you guys what happened just in case you weren't paying attention. See, what happened is the ball went past him after the other guy hit it. Well said, John. Then they interview the guy afterwards. What happened there, Billy? Why don't you tell us what happened? Well, uh, see what happened was, so I was running back and forth, okay? And the ball, see, so he hit the ball to my, to my left, but I ran to my right, okay? The ball went to my left, but I ran over here, and that's how he scored. <laughs> Amazing display of athleticism. Wowie, wowie. Good times. Going to sports games is fun, except the public bathrooms that they have there. Not a big fan. I don't like going to the public bathrooms because I don't think it's fair what men have to deal with when they go in there. Girls, you have little couches and little things. <laughs> Conversation pits. <laughs> As in like Girl Scout cookie parties in there. Mary Kay get together, whatever the heck those are. <laughs> Guys, what do we got? Nothing. You know, you go in there, you get out, you get it done, and that's, that's how it goes. Sometimes getting it done problem is the hard thing, but never fail, never fear, we shall return safely. Is it too much to ask to have like two lazy boys, a keg, and a TV in there for guys? <laughs> I mean, this is where we spend most of our time anyways. Can we get some Wi-Fi in there, have a company meeting or something like that? That will be good. And it's always awkward when you go in there because you know that the second you get in the stall, Men just forget how to lock the door. It's inevitable that you're just gonna go <laughs> And if you missed it, for some reason your eyes say when a door opens, we're gonna look down too. <laughs> uh, that was not good. Public bathrooms. My wife and I don't have any kids yet. We've only been married a year and a half. Give me a break, people. <laughs> But I'd like to have kids someday, mostly because I'd like to be the parent that makes up the useless rules for the children to follow. <laughs> That's right, Dad. Can I you? Father-in-law, you're, uh, you're not off the hook either. No, rules like taking candy from strangers. And I'm getting this rule. I think parents are hypocrites. It's true. I'll tell you why. Little Timmy. Don't take candy from strangers. Mom, that's stupid. Just don't do it. Five minutes later, they pull up to a stoplight and pay some guy in a reflective vest in a bucket for a darn Tootsie Roll. <laughs> Mom, you just said don't talk back to your mother. 
don't have kids. Uh, babies, though, I do like babies. Babies are awesome. I think they're, they're cute and great. I love how parents are always, they always think their baby's a genius. They say they don't understand. <laughs> You're like, clearly they're not. <laughs> Our baby's a genius. He can say mommy. Baby, say mama. Say mama. What the baby says is like, bleh. <laughs> he said mama. Our baby's gonna be Einstein, too. No, and it's like, and then you hold the baby and then they like puke on you. And they're like, oh, that's normal. That's normal. <laughs> normal? No, that's not normal. I mean, wh wh where does it change to where, you know, the second you puke nowadays, <laughs> all over the place, the first thing somebody says, it's not that's normal, it's, did you make it to the toilet? <laughs> yeah, because everybody has the ability to go, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. So uh, that's why I think I'm gonna get a dog first. <laughs> Practice on a dog. I like dogs. I wanna get a dog too, a big dog. I'm not talking about one of those little yippy little house rat things either, no. I'm talking about a big dog, like a horse-sized dog that I can ride to work and wrestle with. Save on gas. Be the modern cowboy riding my dog. There we go. I don't like cats, I'm sorry. Those of you out there that have cats. I don't like them. <laughs> okay. I'm still not convinced. Cats are mean, though, you know? And it's not even the cats. Sometimes, sometimes, it's the cat owners. Now, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Maybe you know this person. I have an aunt. We call her the cat aunt. You've probably seen her before. She's the lady with the matching ribbon in her hair that her cat has. She's got the sweater vest that's all scratched up. It's covered in hair. <laughs> probably seen her. We've gone over to her house before. That's always fun. Sitting in there in her living room. And never anything to eat, except kibbles and bits. <laughs> That's joyous. And when it comes time to sleep, you know, you can't fall asleep there because there's a good chance you're gonna wake up with a cat using your head as a mattress. <laughs> like, why do I have scratches all over my face? And when it's like time to wash up before bedtime, that's mm, weird, you know, because she doesn't have rags or soap. You know, she's just sitting on the couch, all right kids, it's time to wash up. <laughs> Time. <laughs> Weird. We, uh, we always go to the pet, she loves animals, so we always go to the petting zoos with her. That's a fun occasion. They have a lot of animals there, a lot of weird animals that I wouldn't think you would normally have at a petting zoo. Llamas. They have geese at the petting zoos too. Why do we have geese at the petting zoos? Aren't there enough geese running around outside to just go up to it and see the darn thing? Why do we have to put them on display? I cannot stand geese. Talking about the Canadian geese. Oh, ugh. I have a personal vendetta against these things. What is their problem? Huh? They're always so. <laughs> Wrong with you. Wrong with you. And it's like. I mean, I guess you'd be upset too if your neck was three feet long and you pooped every time you took a step. <laughs> Why does this keep happening to me? Did God just forget to add that helpful area on the body of the goose there? Did he just get tired of making stuff and he's like, yeah, they won't need that. <laughs> Michael the archangel was like, Lord, I don't mean to pry. I know it's not really my place, but don't you think that they would need something to control that situation down there? <laughs> Listen, Michael, no, I don't. That'll be funny, watch. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, that's hilarious, God, that's awesome. That is awesome. I have neighbors, too, that yell at the geese. Now that spring has come on, they're doing their little thing, making more geese. They can run around, but they're like, <laughs> and the neighbors think that maybe if I yell at it, that they'll stop. They run the third floor across the way. They're like, shut up! What? With yapping? 10.30 Saturday. Better be quiet by 12. 
What do you think the goose is gonna do? Just be like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we're not doing much down here. We're just laying, sitting on a couple eggs and stuff. I'm sorry, I don't know what you got going on up there. Down here, not much. We're just sitting around down here, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ridiculous, they're not gonna stop. They won't stop unless you hit them with their cars. Don't do it, it's against the law. I actually had a, a pet goose once and uh, we were trying to find a farm for it. And so I called up this one guy who owned a farm and I told him I had a pet goose. Clearly I meant the yellow kind that's not illegal to have. And he started freaking out, he's like, what? He's like, listen to me. If you listen to anything I've ever told you in my entire life, in this one minute we've known each other, listen to this. Do not tell anyone you have a goose. He's like, it's the yellow goose. He's like, oh, okay, you can just bring it to my house. That's fine. Weirdo. I like 24, anybody watch 24 in here? Yes, gotta love Jack Bauer. He's mean, he's mean, but he's cool. You know, I always wondered what it would be like to be one of his kids. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh, I mean, Kim Bauer, she's pretty messed up. Like, what if you had a, you know, a little kid taking him to school? How'd that day go? First thing you do, you wake up at 6.30, guy's like, all right, listen to me. You're gonna go down the hall, you're gonna brush your teeth, but don't tell anyone you're going there, and then I'm gonna take you to school. Go, go, go! In the car. Get out! He doesn't even stop. Get out! Right, you know, after school's over, the kid runs back, runs back in the car. He doesn't even stop. The car's like, okay. Ah. What would it be like to go on a date with Jack Bauer? Imagine being the woman. She's sitting down at the table. He's like, all right. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna order an appetizer. Don't tell the waitress that I'm gonna order it. Don't make eye contact with her. We don't know who she's working for. Slow down there, buddy. Look at chill pill there, pal. Another show I like is the kids' shows. Whatever happened to those good old kids' shows like Scooby-Doo, that's not in the air anymore. I wish it, yeah, I wish it was. I wish Scooby-Doo was out. I loved how they always had, they always had celebrity guests on there in cartoon form, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the Stooges, it's like, okay. But I love it because, you know, I, I was like, well, why didn't they have Arnold Schwarzenegger on there? You know, I wish they would have had him on there. Can you imagine, like, run, roll, Shaggy, here comes that big Austrian guy. I'm like, hey, Scooge, look at his muscles. They're huge. I can fit inside of him twice. Hello, my name is Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm the governor of California. Listen to me. We're going to kill the ghosts. Ah. <laughs> oh, Arnold. You clever lad, you. Oh, man. What about the Muppets? What if Arnold Schwarzenegger was on the Muppets? <laughs> That's a disaster waiting to happen, isn't it? <laughs> Hi, Hulk, Kermit the Frog here, and uh, today we have a special guest. He starred in Terminator and uh, Jingle All the Way. You may have seen that one, kids, because to be honest, you shouldn't be watching the Terminator. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hello, my name is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hi, little froggy, you're so cute. I love you. Ah, come here, you little froggy, I love you. Get away from my Kirby, you big scary monster. <laughs> Now I have bacon. Thank you very much. You guys have been great. Thank you. Thank you.